Welcome to RC Video Reviews. Today we're taking a look at a couple of new servos by KST. This is the X20-4208, and this one is the X20-3005. Before I get into the content, I need to let you know KST did sponsor this video by sending me a couple of 4208s and some 3005s for a plane build that I'm working on right now. These are going to be going into a 78 inch Extreme Flight Extra NG. So with that out of the way, thanks to KST for sending these out for review. I'll have links in the description if you'd like to pick a couple of these up for yourself. I figured we'd spend a little bit of time going through some of the specs because they are impressive for these servos. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about this KST programming tool. This is a tool number three. Mainly it allows you to set the center point of the servo, which I think is really cool if you're trying to set up a plane to be very precise. Anyway, let's get into the details. First up is the X20-4208, and this is one powerhouse of a servo, let me tell you what. It's got a rated voltage of 7.4, but it's got a range of 6 to 8.4, so you can go all the way up to 8.4 volts if you want. And at 8.4 volts, it's got 46 kilogram force per centimeter, so very stout servo. They're pretty quick, too, at 8.4 volts all the way up to 0.07 seconds for 60 degrees of travel. Stall current is 12.3 amps on the high end and 8.8 .8 amps on the low end. It's got a working frequency of 1,520 microseconds at 333 hertz. This servo has a travel range of 200 degrees total, but you'll need a protocol that supports a pulse width range from 500 microseconds on the low end to 2,500 microseconds on the high end. I'll be using Express LRS in this particular setup, and that uses CRSF as a protocol, which means I have a 885 microsecond limit on the low end, and I can go up to 2115 on the high end. So I can't fully exploit the 100 degrees of travel on both sides of center, but I do get a little bit of a bump over the standard 1000 to 2000 range. The 428s also support soft start and programming. So I wanna get into the programming in just a little bit. The key thing about the programmer is you can adjust the center point. So if you're really trying to get a precise 90 degrees off the edge of the servo for your particular setup, you can dial that center in wherever you want. What's really cool about dialing in your center is you don't lose any travel distance from your endpoints. So this endpoints remain equidistant from the center and you don't lose any range. So a very cool feature if you're trying to get that setup dialed in just right. Of course, these are ball bearing servos and they weigh about 80 grams. KSD also advertises them as high lifespan. Let's see the little silk screen on the bottom. These are supposedly high lifespan servos. That's it on the 4208, obviously a very high end servo. In my application, I'll be putting 4208s in for the rudder and ailerons, and then I'll be switching over to the 3005, which is a little brother for the elevators. Because this particular model has two elevator servos, I'm just gonna use one of these 3005s on each side. The 3005s also have an operating range of 6 to 8.4 volts with a rated voltage of 7.4. On the power side, they're a little bit softer at 32 kilogram force per centimeter at 8.4 volts. And on the speed, they're actually a little faster, 0.047 seconds to cover 60 degrees at 8.4 volts. The default travel angle on the servo is 50 degrees plus or minus, so 100 degrees in total. Now the website does say 120 degrees, 60 degrees plus and minus, but according to my measurements, I'm only seeing 50. Now the book does show pulse lengths of 900 to 2100 in the guide with pulse lengths of 1000, 1500 and 2000 for the min, center and max. So I'll experiment a little bit with that, but my initial measurements using a 1000 microsecond low end, a 2000 microsecond high end, it does indeed show up at 50 degrees plus or minus. These servos are also soft start and programmable, which is very cool. As far as weight goes, the book says 70 grams for the 3005s, but I'm showing 77. And the book says 80 grams for the 4208s, and I'm showing 80 grams on the buttons. So the 3005s, they're a little portly, even though they're a little smaller. There's only about a four gram difference between these two. The book says 10 grams, but I'm showing about four or five. First up, I wanna do a little experiment with the 3005 because the book says the default travel angle is 50 degrees plus or minus, so 100 degrees total, and it shows pulse lengths at 900 microseconds to 2100, but it also shows pulse lengths for position negative 50 through zero and positive 50 at 1000 microseconds, 1500 and 2000 respectively. So what I've done in my radio is I've set my min and max for one of my controls, the elevator, to show me 900 microseconds on the low side and 2100 microseconds on the high side. Now I've got a little protractor over the top of the servo. I'll hit a switch, which should max out the travel. And there we go, we've got about 60 degrees. 
So zero and 60 degrees, and that does work using a uh, pulse width output on the radio of 900 microseconds to 2100 microseconds. Before I move on to programming the servos, I'll give you a quick look at my radio setup. I'm using negative 117.2 on the min, positive 117.2 on the max. With extended limits on, you have the ability to set your pulse width outside the default range of 998 to 2012. Next up is the KST servo programming tool. This one says KST tool number three for helicopter servos. I can tell you, even though it says helicopter servos, it works fine on the 428 and the 3005. I've already tested it. This tool gives you the ability to set your pulse width center frequency and to adjust your center point. So I'd like to show you how to adjust the center point because we're not running a flight controller. There's no reason to mess around with the frequency. On the top of the programmer, there's a DC input for six to nine volts. So I'll go ahead and connect my bench power supply and we get a couple of quick little beeps and flashing lights on the frequency screen. The next thing we'll do is connect the servo and there are two ports on the left-hand side. It seems to me the top one works the best. So I'll plug into the top and then you can see the tool has already read the operating frequency of the servo at 1520. I'm just gonna hit enter and accept that value. And now that's been accepted, we can twist the dial and you can see the center point of the servo, this arm is moving. So I'm just gonna set it. What I wanna do is dial it in as close to center as I can. So there's center and we'll hit enter. And now we'll disconnect the servo and connect it to a radio. And then we'll take some measurements. Okay, the first measurement on the sheet will be for center and I'm gonna mark that right here. Then I'm gonna to go to full deflection down and We'll mark that one right here and we'll go to full deflection up and we'll mark that right about there. Nope, I don't like that one. We'll mark it right here instead. This is no good. No good. Okay, that's the initial set point with the center frequency at about 90 degrees. Now what I'll do is take the servo wire off. We'll plug it back into the programmer. The programmer reads the frequency of the servo. We'll hit enter to accept that. And then we're just gonna make a random adjustment. I'm just gonna dial this arm up a little bit just to get it off of that center point. And then we hit enter again. We'll disconnect the servo from the programmer, plug it back into the radio, and we'll check our measurements again. Okay, center looks like it's right about here. Full down looks like it's right about here. And full up. right about there. So you can see that when you make the adjustment, it's not a perfect measurement. It's very hard to get the angles right. But you can see as we made the adjustment, we don't have a change from center to the end point. It remains consistent. So this is measurement number two, measurement number two, and number two. And this one is measurement number one, number one, and number one. So there you go. You can set the center point and you don't lose the relationship between your endpoints. All you have to do is set the center and get that arm, in most cases, 90 degrees, but you may have a use case that's a little different from that. Okay, this time we're looking at the X20-4208 and on the radio on my outputs page, I've got my min and max set to negative 120 and positive 120 respectively. And that gives me the limits of CRSF as a protocol at 2115 microseconds and 885 microseconds. Next thing we'll do is put the protractor above the servo and we'll run this out to its full extent and we'll see what we get. I'm seeing 60 degrees. And if we flip the protractor and put it on 90 degrees, we should get 60 more degrees of travel for 30, which is accurate. What I'm seeing on the X20-4208 is a travel distance of about 60 degrees. To be fair, I'm only driving these from 885 microseconds to 2115 microseconds, not the full range specified in the book of 500 to 2500. So if you're using a protocol that gives you 500 microseconds to 2500 microseconds, you might expect to get the full travel range of 100 degrees on both sides. I'm using a protocol that stops me at 885 and 2115, so that may explain why I'm only seeing 60 degrees of travel. Thanks again to KST for sending these servos out for review. There'll be a link in the description if you'd like to pick these up for yourself. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy.